It's very important. It's very important. Something I had noticed uh, previously in my studies um, of His Majesty Haile Selassie the First Amharic Bible, the Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, and saying the Amharic and the Gutis and the ancient scriptures, you know, like in Hebrew and in the or the Masoretic, the traditional one, called Masora means tradition. So when he said Masoretic, they say the tradition of the Jews. So to put that in context, and the Koina or the common Greek, and then you also have the um, you have the Septuagint, but then you also have a classic Greek. Classic Greek is different than common Greek. But anyway, that's all like part of the um, what they call the semantics or the shim. Mantics or the Shemitic dealing with the Shem, which is very important. Because blessed be the Lord God of Shem. So we have to know what the word means. Hence, we focus on etymology, beginning at English, because that's what we have, you know, come to learn to speak and been forced to speak. We're speaking English, and we've been we've been uh, disorientated linguistically. So we have to begin where we're at in order to get where we're going. So in that process, there's a question we want to address concerning a particular verse of scripture and concerning um, the concerning the man who ran off in the linen in the linen garment or ran off naked as he had linen garment on and linen garment the young man in in, in the Bible uh, in um, math, uh, the Marks Marks Gospel in Marks Gospel Mark 14 and. Uh, Mr. Material had actually posed the question, and we was in the process of the Sukkot, and the Sukkot uh, reasoning, and the Feast of Tabernacles, and the finding of the True Cross, and the hiding of the True Cross, because both of them are ancient Ethiopic um, festivals, the finding and the hiding, and we'll try to touch on that as well, but in Chapter 14, let's go to chapter 14, I think it's verse 51 and 52. He was asked concerning the significance, what is the significance of what is written here within the scripture. And this is a section where Petros, he smites with a sword and follows afar off. Jesus is forsaken by all. And the comparative reading of that is Matthew chapter 26, verse 51 to 56, when Caduce Marcos, when Gel chapter 14. And we're going to begin with verse 47 to verse uh, 52. And this is a part of a, a bait or a section. In other words, uh, where there's a context here. And it says, And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said to them, Are ye come out as against a thief, or thief, with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple, teaching, and ye took me not. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. But the Metaf must be fulfilled. Verse 50, And they all forsook him and fled. Speaking of the Dekam as Amor, the disciple, the Talmudim. And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men, it says, and the young men laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. So the question is, what is the significance of verse uh, 51 and 52? But we want to put this into the context of it, because without the context, we are left with nonsense. So we, let's put this into the context. Now, what's interesting is that um, in praise of Gerald Macy, of Brother Gerald Macy, of a, a European or Englishman, that because of his truth and honesty, we we don't even deem to call him a, a white man because he really defended the African and the Kamite, the Ethiopic, and the true biblical truth, even against his own Euro, you know, European. The European he came out against the European um, misconception and the Egyptologist misconception and the biblical misconception and the Aryan so-called agenda and all the misconception that is associated with that as well. 
Now, in part two of Gerald Macy's Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, the second part of that particular book, he touches on, um, there's a chapter on resurrection. There's a chapter you'll find, there's a chapter on resurrection, the crucifixion and the resurrection connected with ancient Egypt and the ancient mythos or the muthos. The muthos actually, m myth actually means a story. You understand? A, a story. And logos means the word. So in proper context, mythology is parabolic. It's the parables. When Christ told, taught us parables and he taught the disciples parables, basically these are ancient mythologies. But there was a meaning, an initiate, uh, initiate meaning. Even Christ, he makes that clear in, in uh, Caduce, uh, Mateus is Wengel, chapter Wengel, chapter 13, where he says unto, unto you, oh, oh, okay, let's get it right here, because we don't even like to just, when we got the Bible in front of us, let's just go over it until we can, you know, write this onto our hard drive, where the disciples ask him, why speakest thou to them in parables? Verse 10, Matthew, uh, Matthew 13. He answered, Jesus, Geotachin Jesus, answered and said to them, because it is given to you to know the mysteries. When you get to the root of mysteries, you'll find the word myth in the root of mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the Mengista Samayat, the kingdom of the heavens, plural, but to them, those who are outside of the discipleship fellowship, it is not given. Verse 13, uh, verse 12, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Verse 13, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand or overstand. And this is what Gerald Macy proves in his documents concerning ancient Egypt, the Kamite, the Ethiopic Genesis, the Natural Genesis, but pointing to the ancient Tob, or the good land, the Kui land, or Tobia, which was the ancient name of Ethiopia. Verse 14 says, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, or overstand if you please, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Now what's interesting about this is that when we're dealing with the ancient mythologies, it's both the hearing of the story you, you us, and the seeing of the imagery. So there's imagery like from ancient Kamai, the Kometian, the ancient Egypt, and even ancient Tobia, ancient Ethiopia, where the hieroglyphs was more like graffiti, but in ancient Egypt, hieroglyphs was initiated, you had to be initiated into the comprehension of what they really meant. You understand? But what's interesting about what Jesus Christ is saying, next thing he says is, For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous, the righteous, the prophets, the biyad, and the righteous, the tzadikon, have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them, such as in this present day and time where a lot of the halves of the story have been brought forward, and there's a lot of more discover, lot, many more discoveries and things that other generations, even Macy and his generation, there were certain discoveries, and he was able to put it together, while others before that didn't have these discoveries and did not hear of these ancient texts and these ancient documents. So, Jesus Christos basically says that to his disciples, they were the ones who would be the initiated ones. 
So it's very important to initiate, to initiate means to get started. They will get started on the path of comprehending these things. You understand? So the same is true as we're about to address and touch on Mark and this uh, young man or the naked man, as it's been called by some. Now, of course, this has been grossly perverted by those who needed an opportunity to pervert it. You know, this is where some would say, well, yes, was Christos and disciples, they were homosexual, because look, there's this naked boy out there and so forth and so on. What's he doing for linen cloth? If you look around on the Internet, you Google it, you will basically will find that many groups like some of the so-called homosexual, so-called Christians, actually utilize this and other areas of scripture, like David and Jonathan and Ruth and Naomi, to push forward their agenda.